today I thought I'd go back to my roots a little, you know, take a look at some YouTubers once again, but we're going to be doing it a bit differently. This is Level Earth Observer, and apparently I misrepresented him on my Bite Size channel. You see, I called him a flat earther, but he corrected me and told me he's a demonstrable scientist. To me, evidence suggests otherwise, because it's, it's ironic, you see, he doesn't believe in the globe earth. You know, I'm so sorry, I don't know why I assumed you were a flat earther. You know, may maybe it was the name, you know, Level Earth Observer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that for Earth, you think like that, didn't you? What do you think? Anyway, that's the point of this video, I'm here to never misrepresent him again. I want to know what he believes in and what he has to say. So other than looking up at the sky and fantasizing, the globe only has psychological methods for getting you to believe, i.e. being gaslit by the ignorant general populace into going along with the insane delusion that we live on a cannibal flying for a vacuum. It's all psychological. You mean like the Cavendish experiment, which is run on a, a very regular basis to prove that mass attracts mass, you know, gravity. Yeah, this is totally psychological, where people are told to run the experiment for themselves to not only learn how gravity works, but also how science works generally. But here's the thing, it means nothing when you stand on the things that are simply true, which is why I won't entertain or stand by anything that can't be demonstrated in a scientific manner. That way, I don't put myself out there to, to, be, to be debunked by anyone. The only debunked videos that you'll see regarding me will be men, believe it or not, grown men defending airfix models and CGI fails and harness fails. This is all the propagandists offer up, is defense of absurdities. They can't even provide real world demonstrable science. So it's all psychological to get you to go along with the delusion that is the globe, okay? That's right, yeah, you just poke holes in the science you don't understand and show no evidence for what you believe in. Because, as you said yourself, you're not a flat earther, so you don't believe in flat earth, and you don't believe in globe earth either. So, level earth observer, what do you believe in? Demonstrable science? I think we have a different definition for what that means. So, you're gonna have to elaborate a little bit. As for your fear of being debunked, that's kind of how science works. There are always going to be competing theories about how the world and the universe works around us, and if one works and the other doesn't, it's debunked, then it's fine. Science has now progressed. But of course, when you stand on the things that are simply true that can be demonstrated, like myself, the power of the gaslighting is diminished to zero because they have nothing. It's water off a duck's back. Now, here's a prime example. Years ago, I've gone into the canteen at work. It's full of brickies. I could sense the atmosphere as soon as I walked in, so I already knew it was coming. One guy with a really cheeky grin, here drive, what's this about you thinking the earth's flat? And the whole canteen erupted with laughter. I spent two or three minutes destroying the straw man misrepresentations that resided in these bricklayers' heads, of course put there by the mainstream. Once that had been swatted out of the way, I gave the lads a few prime real world examples of what I stood by, tower cranes, plumb bobs, air pressure systems cannot reside next to us vacuum without solid separation large standing bodies of water of course do not have the ability to display convexity upon its surface and of course the brickies and all the tradesmen use plumb bobs and levels so I highlighted that as well and of course the tower crane you can't have cranes being dead still on a cannonball that's doing ludicrous speeds in all different directions some of these cranes upside down in relation to me clearly ridiculous and scientifically impossible and as a result, the canteen, over the course of about four or five minutes, went from one of mockery to one of dead silence. You could hear a pin drop as I'd gone from being mocked by this group of in, uh, ignorant bricklayers to suddenly the canteen's dead quiet. I've got 20 tradesmen just staring at me like mannequins, waiting, not knowing what to do or what to say. I kind of left it at that, walked out, and that all the way walking up the path, I could hear the utter silence from the canteen, as of course, the penny had dropped like a brick falling from the top of the scaffolding and landing on one of these bricklayers' heads. Over the course of the next few weeks, I was asked various questions regarding our realm about what I stand by, and as a result of that, quite a lot of men on that site actually woke up to the globe line. 
one of them was actually doing an open university course can't remember if it was might have even been astrophysics he still continued the course but had a bit of a rude awakening regarding the conversations me and in that look i'm sorry you are mocked in such a way you're still a human being but that pin drop of silence that was probably awkwardness he could display the honesty to stand by the things that were true which is what what do you stand by you should feel incredibly comfortable stood on the ground that is fundamentally true. And for me, it's the three fundamentals. Large standing bodies of water, tower cranes, and air pressure systems cannot be right next to a, a vacuum without solid separation. Three scientific fundamental facts that can be tested and verified by every human on Earth that prove scientifically the globe is impossible. So no amount of gaslighting will ever change that. So, you're poking holes in three different points of globe Earth. Well, you still haven't actually told us what you believe in to be debunked. I know you don't like being debunked, and that's probably why you don't do it. So, let's take a look at all three anyway. As with large standing bodies of water, it's, it's the curvature of Earth you have an issue with, right? Because the water's curved, I assume that's what you're referring to. Ancient Greek philosophers, all the way back then, worked out that the Earth was round. Okay, and if land is curved, the water on that land must be curved too. But I know that answer won't suffice for you, will it? Here's some more evidence as to the earth being curved. Specifically the earth in general, the water on top of it must also be curved. At the Burj Khalifa, if you start off at the bottom, watch the sun set, you can then travel up and see the sun set once again. But this must be the curvature of the earth getting in the way as the sun must be over here you're viewing here and the Earth's curvature gets in the way, so you go up on the building and then you can see over the curvature. In fact, fasting ends at different times of the day, depending on which floor you're on in the Burj Khalifa, because it's based on when the sun sets. This doesn't have to be in the Burj Khalifa either. It can be on a beach. Just go to the beach where you've got water as the horizon. You just lie down on the beach. Simple as. When the sun sets and you can't see it anymore, literally it just passes through, stand up. You can then see it again. It's as simple as that. More specifically with water though, as ships are traveling away from you, as they go over the curve, away from your vision, you can't see the bottom of that ship anymore. In fact, it's the top part of the ship that disappears last. Let's move on to tower cranes, but I don't really understand what your issue is here. You think that because we travel at a constant speed, through a vacuum that we should be experiencing some kind of force here. Well, you don't. You only feel acceleration, not speed. Just get in a car and go somewhere safe to test stuff out, okay? Assuming you can drive. Then when you're there, you can accelerate up to a normal speed. Now you can feel the car, you in the car, getting pushed back a bit, right? When you get to that constant speed, then you're fine. You don't feel those forces anymore unless you you know, turn, right? Then you break and then you feel forces again. It's acceleration and deceleration that you feel, not constant speed. You said you're a demonstrable scientist, so you're welcome for the experiment. As for the vacuum, the vacuum isn't an actual vacuum, okay? The vacuums, vacuum cleaners get their names from the vacuum of space, emptiness of space, not the other way around. Now we're on to air pressure systems. So I'm assuming this is the vacuum of space that we travel through, that you believe is a vacuum cleaner that's gonna suck everything away. Well, let's get into that. But I don't know your belief on gravity. I know that you do believe in gravity, just not in the accepted version of gravity that we currently have. But I do wanna ask you a question. By what force is our atmosphere expected to be ejected into space? Space is a vacuum, meaning it's relatively empty. Sure, the atmosphere wants to disperse in all directions, towards Earth and away from it, but gravity is pulling it down towards Earth. Now there might be the force of centripetal force where the Earth spins and it's pushing the atmosphere slightly away from it, but the force of gravity is far superior than that force. But that's the only force trying to push it away. But yeah, you are right. I didn't expect to be agreeing with you on this. Some atmosphere does leak out of Earth because of this dispersal but gravity does a pretty good job at holding the majority of it together. If you prefer to take a look at something better, you know, like an external object, try Jupiter. It's a really big gas giant in the vacuum of space that you can get a telescope and look at yourself. But if I'm to be honest, 
I'm not sure I can reliably say that you believe in space. Now, I'm aware that I'll never change your mind. I don't want to. I just want to stop people being fooled by whatever it is you believe in, which we still haven't figured out yet. But I do recommend, as a demonstrable scientist, stop ranting and demonstrate your science, please. I'd love to learn. Maybe you can convince me that some of the theories that we hold true are not actually true. But until you present any evidence, I can't really say anything about it, can I? Thanks for watching, guys. And if you find any other videos like this, expressing some form of theories, maybe ones that actually present their own theories, like ancient aliens or ancient apocalypse theories, which are much more credible, but are not without their flaws or anything else, I'd love to check them out and just see what they're about. And when we've got some more videos up, there'll be two videos on screen right now. Feel free to click on one and I'll see you there.